Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Micah, welcome to my channel Floating in Dreams. And today's video is going to be all about Too Faced eyeshadow palettes. If you don't know anything about this channel, I'm uh, a, a hobby YouTuber who just likes to chat about makeup and fashion. And over the years I have gathered quite a few eyeshadow palettes and every single month I choose a eyeshadow palette family. Uh, I like to call them for my eyeshadow palette collection and talk to you about them. So far I've done Juvia's Place, I've done My Huda Beauty, I've done a couple of other brands and I've got lots more coming your way because I hope to be doing this series until the end of the year. I think I have enough to do it until the end of the year. Um, and Too Faced um, is a brand that, as you can see, I don't know, in my brain it feels like I have more by them, but when I gather it all together, this is what I end up with. And that's mainly because after the Gingerbread Spice came out, I really haven't been buying any other Too Faced palettes that have come out on the market. And the reason for that is because they just seem to be repeating themselves a lot, which I'm not a huge fan of, so I have the ones I like. Um, that being said, these are not all created equal in my, in my personal opinion. And uh, yeah, I just thought we could chat about these, do some swatches, and ha just have a grand old mooch about eyeshadow palettes, because ultimately, that is my favorite thing to talk about. So let's get started. So I thought I could start us off with what's lying in the back, which is the Too Faced Just Peachy Mattes. And this is a palette that for a very long time I didn't buy because I, I think I already owned the Sweet Peach and I just didn't love the peach smell that it has. So I was very, very, well, let's just say scared that this would have the same scent because I couldn't use my Sweet Peach until the scent had mostly worn off. I am not a huge fan of scented makeup and of course a lot of Too Faced makeup is scented. Um, and especially the Sweet Peach to me just was that Haribo, like candy peach kind of uh, scent. And I do my makeup early in the morning, like 6, 7 a.m. and I do not want to smell this kind of scent that early in the morning, it just made me just feeling very nauseous. So I was afraid this would smell the same, which is why I held off buying it for a very long time. But this ended up having a different peach scent, and this one I do like. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of these overly fragranced uh, makeup products by any means. Uh, I also don't like it if they scent very florally, or if they smell really fruity, or anything like that. Not a fan. However, this palette has earned its, well, its position in my makeup collection as one of the very few all matte palettes that I keep around. Because if I want to go for an all matte look, this is probably the only eyeshadow palette that I feel I can reach for because it has enough depth and dimension between these 12 shades. And this is a really good, like, matte neutral palette to pull in if you just need a matte and you quickly want to do some sort of look. My favorite shade in the palette is probably Chocolate dr uh, Dipped. Is that what it's called? Yes. Chocolate Dipped over here, that really nice, really intense, cool tone brown. You'll see it in a swatch. I love this as liner. Um, and when I did a video last year where I come up, came up with my own eyeshadow palette, so I cobbled together 15 shades to come up with an eyeshadow palette. Like, if I were to create one, what would I put in? And that shade got selected to be put in that palette. So that says quite a lot. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I wanted to say about this um, this palette. It took a long time for me to get it, but I'm very happy that I have it. And this the, one of the reasons why I've been decluttering a lot of my other matte palettes is because I already own this. This and my The Balm meet matte palettes. If I just have those four, I can do everything I want with a matte shadow. So for me, I every single palette on the market could be like different variations of shimmers and I just have those four palettes as mattes and then I would be very happy. I'm not a huge lover of matte eyeshadow because I just feel that, you know, they're nice to set up a look, but it's the shimmers that make it fun. So for me, <laughs> I like to have a little bit of fun with my makeup as well. So let's get to swatches. I want to do it row by row for you. We don't have that many palettes in this video today, so I think I can swatch the entire palette for you. So that's what those first four shades swatch like. Put these here. One, two, 
two, three, four. There we go. So there you can just see the difference as well between those two lighter shades. I could use either one, it would be fine. And that um, like more plummy shade here at the end, uh, just ripe, had always been a little bit dry. It just never really felt the smoothest. Peach Sangria is nice for like a pop of something colorful, but again, that is quite a dry shade. So it doesn't feel the best, but it does apply okay, I'd say, for a shade like that. So this way you can see a little bit what they look like when they go on. So do you just see that that really dark shade just works really well? So yeah, that's what the Just Peachy Mattes looks like. So as you can see, against my fair skin, this isn't super duper, like, warm toned. It's not too orange leaning. There's quite actually quite a few neutral shades such as this one and this one. And also like even though that this is quite an orangey shade, I could still use it to blend things out. There's really only this one and that one that I feel are too warm toned for my skin tone, but everything else I can use. All right, so now we have this little family over here and um, I just thought we could save that for last. So for those of you who have been following me for a while, may already know that the white chocolate bar is actually my favorite. Uh, so I know that was limited edition and you can no longer find it, but I am fair and I have a cool to neutral undertone. So for me, these shades just worked really, really well. I think that if you have a deeper complexion or if you have more olive undertones or if you just have a much more orangey yellow undertone to your skin, then these, these shadows are just not really going to be your cup of tea because they are just too cool toned and too light. So I am a MAC NC15, that's usually what I go for in a MAC foundation. And uh, like very often I'll need like either the lightest shade or second to lightest shade. I do tend to go for foundations that also are a bit more pink tone leaning. I find that more flattering on myself. I can get away with a yellow undertone. I do have a more neutral leaning undertone than anything else. So I can get away with warm tones. However, I just find it more flattering if I use something more cool toned. And this palette has some really pretty shimmers, as you will see in a minute. There are also a couple of shades in here where I'm like, hmm, really? Uh, Banana Date, for instance, is one I don't really reach for. And Black Sugar, it's okay as a liner, but I don't really do anything else with it. But I like how this palette kind of works in quads. So for me, you have like this little quad over here, you've got some pops of color, you've got some peachiness, and then some lovely, lovely shimmers. And yeah, that's just all I really need. So for me, uh, the two larger pans in the black could have been left out, everything else I like. So let me swatch this for you. So again, I'll go top row, middle row, bottom row. So that's what the top row here looks like. This shimmer is really lovely. This is nice for like a blend shade. The green is pretty as a pop of something on the lower lash line. The white I don't reach for. And this is just a great transition -y shade on me. It is a like mauve-y, taupey kind of brown. And that's my kind of vibe if you know anything about me. And that's what that second row looks like. So we've got three shimmers here. Uh, uh, frosted apricot is nice, but not really something that I necessarily need. It's nice as an inner corner highlight. Like I said, I do quite like this peachy shade, and also this shimmer, Indulge, is one of my favorites in the palette. The lavender is really pretty as a pop of something on the lower lash line. And then these two mattes, they don't swatch the best, but uh, same with this actually, that taupey shade as well. But on me, if I use them with a fluffy brush and I put them in the crease or I use them to deepen things up or I use it to blend stuff out with, it works really, really well on my complexion and it, it just makes for a really pretty soft neutral look. So I put Banana Date over here, then we've got that peach at the start, then Cookie Dough, and then my favorite shade in the palette, which is Sugared Raisin. This may need a bit of a glitter glue for it to really stick down, but do you just see how reflective that is? I love it. And black sugar is okay if you just approach it as a black matte and you disregard the fact that it's got glitters in it. So is this a perfect palette? By no means. However, for my fair skin, this is exactly what I need if I just want to go for something super neutral and that doesn't stick out too much. Um, as you will see in a minute, my critique with some of the earlier Too Faced palettes that I also own is that they are just too deep on me and therefore make everything into a smoky eye. 
which is not always what I want. Like sometimes I just want something fun and neutral and this palette gives me that with a pop of something colorful on the, on the lower lash line. So for me, for my fair skin, the white chocolate bar was the most successful palette by Too Faced that's come out. Moving on then to the Sweet Peach. I already mentioned not loving the scent of this, uh, so I'm not gonna go into it again. But this color story, I remember when this first launched, it was super hyped up. But at the, mo at the moment that palette released, it wasn't, like Too Faced wasn't for sale in the Netherlands. We had Too Faced for a hot moment back in the day when we had Sephora. But Sephora over here was taken off the market as a store because it wasn't selling enough products. It just wasn't. Make the Netherlands isn't necessarily a very makeup oriented, beauty oriented country to per se. Like it's not really something that is part of our national identity. So it's it's definitely something that it's more of a niche thing to do. And something like Sephora was a shop-in-shop shop concept within a department store that also went bankrupt like two years later, like after Sephora had already left the market. Um, and it took a while after Sephora left for Too Faced to find a spot onto the Dutch market again. And then even when they did come to the Dutch market, it took a while for them to release products at the same time as they do in the US. Those new blushes that they have come out with have found its way to the Dutch market, but they are only available online. They are not yet available in stores. However, when this launched, Too Faced was nowhere to be found. So I just knew at that time that I should not get my hopes up trying to get the palette. So I had completely written this one off. I wasn't going to buy it. And then I was on a trip in London and they had five left at Debenhams. So I picked one up. It's from the first batch. I've heard people say about the Sweet Peach palette that depending on the batch you got, you got a good one or a bad one. I personally had no issues with this. I love that this palette doesn't have the ginormous pans for the lighter colors. Those are always going to, like, just ended up being my least favorite shades in Too Faced palettes because I already have them a million times over. I know they make them bigger because you tend to use them more, but since every single palette does them, I don't need a double-sized pan for the lighter shades because then I can just use another palette if I use it up in this one. Anywho, um, so I do like that here we just get 18 pants and they're all equally sized. It's a bit more pleasing to the eye. Uh, but I'm going to say what I've said about this palette a lot of times. This side of the palette, I essentially ignore. Um, you will see in a minute when I swatch these out that especially like, well, maybe that brown is okay, but these two purples, they just look identical on my skin. I just, you can't see the difference because I'm so, so light that it just blurs into one big blob if I pull in any of these colors. I have used Summer Yum. I like that as a deepening shade, but that's the deepest I go. I kind of use Puree a lot in the crease, and then I use some of these shimmers that are over here. I really like Bellini and Luscious. Uh, I really don't like Candy Peach, even though that's like the peach shade in the palette. I do really like these two light shades. I love Nectar. I also love Caramelized. However, you will see that quite a few of my Too Faced palettes have this little nick in the one of the bottom shades, and that's because my nails are sometimes quite long, and if I pick these up, if they're lying on a table like this, and I don't grab them well enough, and the lid would open up on me, and then my nail would flip into the eyeshadow. So several of my Too Faced palettes have that because the magnets on these, they're not very strong. So I wish these would shut a little bit better as well. But let's get to swatching. And that's what that top row here looks like. You can just see I love Luscious because of that shine. It's the peachy version of Sugar Raisin and the white chocolate for me. That creamy white I could have done without. I do quite enjoy Just Peachy, but I don't use it that often. The green I really never reach for. I don't feel it goes with anything that goes in the palette. The black in this palette has been atrocious from the start. And I do really like that darker brown at the end there. If I really want to do liner or something like that, I'll reach for um, charmed, I'm sure. Right, and there we have the next row. So we have Nectar, which I already mentioned is one of my favorites. This is like luscious, but then a little bit more golden toned. I also quite like Cobbler, but it has a bit of a satiny sheen, so it's not my favorite because of that. Candy Peach, I think, is one of the weakest shades in the entire palette. 
I do like Bellini. It is a little bit more subtle, but I really like combining it with Luscious. So a little bit of Bellini all over the lid and then Luscious in the center of the lid makes for a very pretty look. And these are those two purples. Do you just see that, that peach pit shade? It, it, it's more of like a really deep plum, but on me that just doesn't do enough. And that purple is just, it's not swatching the best either. It's very dry as well, so these darker shades just weren't it in this palette. And there we have the last rose swatch. So we've got Peaches and Cream and Georgia, which is two, which are two of my favorite blend shades. Depending on whether I'm going a little bit more brown toned or whether I'm going a bit more peach toned with this, I use either one of these as blend shades or inner corner highlights. I like caramelized. It's nice for the lower lash line. And then these are the two mattes that I like to usually use for like setting up things or deepening things up. And then Talk Derby to me is just... <laughs> Another not so great shade in this palette. This is the kind of shade I only really use for liner or something like that. I don't, I'm never really interested in these kind of shades and you've got like three of them in this palette. So in hindsight, would I purchase this again if, uh, if this came out now? I probably wouldn't. Um, it's got a couple of lovely shades that I keep it around for. I have a go-to look that I like doing with this every spring. That's what I do with this and I don't do anything else with it really. Moving on then, then the to the choo moving on then to the chocolate bonbons, and this is my other favorite after the white chocolate bar, because it is cooler toned. Is it that cool tone though? I think there are a couple of warm tones in here. Um, molasses chip and also Bordeaux have a bit more warmth to it, but you get a lot of like like lovely like taupey grayish shades, some mauvey shades. Sprinkles is a lovely inner corner highlight. Uh, again here, I don't really use Divinity at all, but I do really like the dark shade in here, Earl Grey, I like. And Totally Fetch is a Too Faced classic. Um, again, this is not a palette I bought when it released straight away. A, we didn't have Sephora at the time still. And <laughs> it also really threw me off with this hard packaging. I was like, what are we doing? I'm, I mean... Yeah, this this is just, it didn't feel like me, however, because of the shade selection. That's why I keep it around, but this is not my aesthetic. I find it very childish, and it's just, it's not my vibe. <laughs> not my vibe. Let's get to swatching. So there we have that top row, and Almond Truffle is one of my favorite, like, crease shades of all time. I kind of like satin sheets, but this is a little golden tone, so I don't love it for that. I think Sprinkles actually goes with the palette a lot better, so I wish Sprinkles would have been a big pen, and satin sheets would have been a smaller pen. Oh well. Molasses Chip is very orange-toned and quite warm-toned compared to everything else the palette has, I already mentioned. And then towards the end we have Malted, which is another great matte in this palette. And that's the next row down, so we are starting off with Cashew Chew. I tend to use it as a blend shade a lot. This probably doesn't even show up a lot, but this is great for like transitioning things and to not make it too stark. Then we get Cotton Candy, which I prefer sprinkles over Cotton Candy. I didn't need both per se. Uh, Cafe Au Lait is my favorite shimmer in the palette. That one also has a dip because I always use it in that little corner right there. Uh, and then we have Bordeaux, which is nice, but it's got a bit of red. I wish this would have been more cool toned. Mocha doesn't swatch the best, but like some of the shades in the white chocolate bar, I do feel it still performs okay. I actually like to sometimes blend mocha and truffle. If I want to get a little bit more out of almond truffle, then I just pop in a little bit of mocha. And this purple does work quite okay. So for in terms of how Too Faced purples go, I think this is one of the best ones they've done. And there we have the bottom row. I kind of like Dark Truffle because it is that deeper shade that has a bit more of a plum undertone. So again, I didn't need both Bordeaux and Dark Truffle. Again, I feel this color story could have been a lot more edited than it is. Um, then we have, um, what's it called? Pe uh, pecan Praline, which is the, uh, not a great shade in terms of how it swatches, swatches and also it's a little bit gray toned. I wish this had a little bit more brown to it so it was more like a light taupe than a true gray um, because then you would have something that sort of bridges the gap between almond truffle and cashew chew a lot more whereas now this is a little bit of a weird one and it stands out. Uh, totally Fetch is okay. Uh, I use this in the crease mostly if I use it. 
Earl Grey is uh, one of my favorite like bluey gray tones that I own in my collection. I already mentioned that Loving Divinity, but yeah, those that you also get. So yeah, this is a lovely palette, one of my favorites from Too Faced for a reason for sure. Next up is the Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar, and this would have to be my third favorite Too Faced palette. This was actually the first one I bought. Um, I remember when I had a trip planned to the US, it must have been 2015 or 2016, I don't know. I've had this palette for a long time, and I remember watching Emily Noel, she did a video all about like Urban Decay Naked 1 versus Urban Decay Naked 2, Too Faced Chocolate Bar number 1 versus uh, the Chocolate Bar number 2. Like she had all of these palettes and that I couldn't buy because they weren't for sale in the Netherlands. And I remember watching that video in preparation of my trip and based on her video, I decided to buy this one over this one at the time. And I'm still very happy till this day that I made that decision um, because I do really like this palette. Again, why do I like this? It's got some cooler tones over here and I definitely tend to use sort of like this side of the palette more. Uh, I don't really go in for the blue. I don't really go in for peanut butter. I know that that shade caused a storm and it made them do other palettes with just peanut butter center shades, of course. Um, but here as well, I feel that there are plenty of shades that I could do without. However, this cool tone, Pink Sugar, I know a lot of people hate, but I love it as an inner corner highlight. I love Nougat. I love Truffled. Frosting is nice, hot fudge, mousse, and rum raising, which is a great taupe shimmer. So here you get a good mix of some warmer tones, but also plenty of cool tones, which is why this one was my favorite in the end. It pulled a lot more neutral on me. And if I want to go warm toned, this is the kind of warm tones I would go for. Um, I just think that both Caramel and Bon Bon, having that together in one palette, is a bit superfluous. Let's get to swatching. I was already swatching the second row, but first we need to chat about the top row, of course. Uh, Licorice is a black, and then we also get the next shade, um, Hot Fudge, which to me, I again, I could have done without both, like just one of these. I didn't need both. Uh, uh, coconut Cream is that lighter shade that I already mentioned I don't use often. Nougat barely shows up, but it's a great blend shade, and I do really like Truffled. That's a really nice deep shade for me. And so there you have the shades from the second row. So we've got Coca Chili, which is a brown with a bit of glitter, but that kind of disappears. So again, I like that quite a bit for deepening things up. Pink Sugar doesn't really show up unless you pick it up with a brush. Uh, Puddin, I really like as a crease shade in this palette. Like I said, the blue I never really use. And Peanut Butter is a bit too warm toned for me. I do like frosting. And then we have the bottom row swatched right there. So Rum Raisin, I think I need to build it up a little bit because, and it's a bit in, a, in an awkward spot, but that I really like. It's it's subtly shimmery. It's not like metallic Kapow Wow, but I do really like it. It's sort of like the more toned down version of the Sugared Raisin shade in the White Chocolate Bar. Probably why I like these shades so much because they're taupes. Uh, Mousse is nice. Um, like I said, these two warm tone shimmers, I could do, like, for me, they're too similar once I put them on my eye. And also Butter Pecan, I could have done without, even though it is pretty. I use it as an inner corner highlight, but it looks very yellow toned in the pan, which is why I don't love it. And let's talk about the OG, the chocolate bar. This was, uh, I think, before buying this, I bought this. So I already owned everything else, and then I was like, I'll complete the collection. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, that's really the only reason why I bought this palette. No other reason than just to have it to complete the collection because this is far too dark for me. I can use salted caramel, I can use marzipan, I can use hazelnut, I can use milk chocolate, and triple fudge and gilu ganache. Those are my, oh, semi-sweet as well. Those are my favorite shades in this palette. Everything else, like these ones, they all look the same. Ho Chocolate I've used as well. I don't really love golds, so that's something I wouldn't really use. Champagne Truffle I've used a bit as an inner corner highlight. Again, with the matte beige shade, like, hmm. So yeah, there, there is, again, one look that I kind of like doing with this palette. 
but it's the kind of look that I feel I can do with a lot of different palettes. So that's why this one is no longer part of my actively in-use makeup collection. I still have it. I will never get rid of it because it's part of makeup history. Like, who did not own this palette at some point? Like, I think everyone did. Um, and I think you can still buy this one. I think everything else I've talked about so far is pretty much discontinued, except for this one. Uh, they've kept this uh, one around for a long time. And I can see why, because I think if you have, like, medium to dark skin, this can be lovely on you. However, on my pale skin, and I actually demonstrated this in a video as well that I did a long time ago, I tried doing three looks with this palette using all the different shades that it has to offer and every look just comes out looking the same. That, that's what happens to me when palettes are too dark. Every, I, I can essentially only do one look with this and everything will just turn out the same. So let me get to swatching because I know that this still has great quality. So here, like with the semi suede, whether I have this shade or this shade, it really doesn't make much of a difference. Gilded Ganache looks very green in the pan, but on me it just looks like a deeper brown, just like Triple Fudge does. So I could have done without one of those. Uh, the matte white, as I mentioned, I use it as a blend shade, but that's about it. Milk Chocolate I like as a transition blending crease kind of shade. And then that plummy shade is just... It's a bit too close to the browns, so I could use this or that, and it really doesn't make much of a difference. Um, so these are the sh swatches of the second row. So we have Salted Caramel. It's very similar to Milk Chocolate, I feel. Milk Chocolate is just a little bit more cool toned. Um, then we have Marzipan, which is one of my favorite shimmers in this palette. Then we have Semi Sweet, which, I mean, again, it's just a little bit too deep, but I do like it in the crease sometimes. The matte pink I use in the inner corner mostly. This purple is nice as a like uh, inner no a lower lash line accent. And then this is supposed to be like a plum shade, amaretto. It looks like another brown on me. So there you have the last row swatched. Again, I do really like hazelnut in here. Uh, Creme brulee I could have done without. Uh, this is called ho chocolate. That one I do like as well. But again. Whether I use hazelnut or ho chocolate, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. I really wanted to love Cherry Cordial. I know that Emily Noel raved about that shade being her favorite crease shade. But for me, like some of this, like what's going on on the other side of the palette, it's identical. And then uh, tr Champagne Truffle, uh, just as an inner corner highlight, this is too bright compared to everything else I feel and it makes for a very stark contrast. Last but not least, the Gingerbread Spice. And this is the only more recent Too Faced release that I actually bought. I never got the extra spice because I felt it was too similar to this. And I didn't get the Pumpkin Spice last year because I also felt it was too similar to this and other palettes I already have. It's got some more purples and that that's what makes me want to try it. But it just reminds me too much of like, if I combine this with the Sweet Peach, I feel I would get something similarly. I know that's probably not true for those of you who have it, but this is there for the last palette from Too Faced that I bought. And is this is a regret? I, I wouldn't call this a regret per se. I was very excited for this when I bought it, but again, it just very warm toned, very dark. I do really like these like berry shades, D Gumdrop and Hot Toddy. Those are really nice, and I like Spiced Rum. Uh, those I really like. I actually ended up liking these like deeper shades on this end a lot better than I had anticipated based on other things I've seen Too Faced do. But yeah, this is just a bit too warm toned for my liking. So that's what the top row swatch would look like. Uh, again, that very light shade, but it's not too big, and this is actually quite well pigmented. Uh, this like spiked eggnog shade is a really lovely shimmer, but again, it's very bright, so I only tend to use these kind of things in the inner corner. Hot Toddy is nice. Gingerbread is nice for like that transition-y kind of shade. A yellow tone gold like that, I never go for, but the purple in here is really nice, so I'm really happy to see that purple in here. And that is what the second row looks like. That frosted shade just doesn't really do much for me, but it, it can be used as an inner corner highlight. Again, like a peach tone shimmer. Like, this is where I felt Too Faced was just getting repetitive. This is far too orange for me to even like it. And also the next shade next to it called Oh Snap I would never use. 
I do quite like Bake It Till You Make It uh, because it has that more like duochrome reddish kind of flip. I do like browns like that. And then this is what I wanted Gilded Ganache in the original chocolate bar, or is it a semi-sweet? In the original chocolate bar to be. So Spice of Life is that like olive -y green that I do like. And there you have the bottom row. The pink in here is again one of the nicer pinks that they've done. The matte purple in here works really well too. This is far too orange toned for me, it seems at first, uh, but Hot Toddy is a duochrome and so when you move it it's either orange or pink which I really love. I really like pairing it with Gumdrop to make it look a little bit more berry. Then we've got a really nice, really nice deep shade that I like for liner. Uh, this is that kind of like plummy brown shade that I do like when it's deep. Uh, Gingerbread Latte is a great uh, transition-y crease cre shade for me. And this is that spiced rum shade, which I like. All right, so there you have it. Those were my two faced eyeshadow palettes and going a little bit more in depth in them, into them, how I feel about them with some swatches. There wasn't a lot here, so I wanted to take the time to make sure I swatch everything live for you. But as I mentioned, I do believe I have reviews up with most of these, if not all of these on my blog as well. Uh, these are of course older palettes. I don't think any of these are still on the market today, but I like chatting about stuff that I have and for what reason, like these two palettes, like I go back to them all the time like if I just if I'm stuck in a rut and I don't know what to do white chocolate bar and I know it will be fine you know that's really what Too Faced is for me as well so I haven't bought any of their other palettes like the pineapple one and the berry one that came out that they came out with I thought had lovely quality but the color stories I felt just weren't unique enough I felt the same way I think those were part of their Tutti Frutti collection I feel the same way about a lot of the mini palettes they've been coming out with. It all seems just a rendition of things they've already done in the past. So for me, I won't be buying any more Too Faced unless they really come out with something exciting and new that really gets my heartbeat racing. So far, they haven't. So that's why this is where the Too Faced collection currently stands. I really hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week. So hope to see you in my next video. Bye everyone. Have a good day.